There is a spirit of energy and vigor in the mountains that the mountain man sought to find. And today, that spirit's embodied in Laramie Miller, Sasquatch. He springs from the era when the trails were new and survival hinged on the ability of a man to make his own way in the wilderness. Sasquatch kindles the spark of the time when men in buckskin roamed these summits. He leaves his prints where no one has since centuries before, hunting for the old spirit of the country, living by his own devices, meeting the wilderness on its own terms. So he rides the trails in search of the dream of outer solitude and lives the way men once did on the trail of the mountain man. Wapiti, Shawnee for white rump, the crowned head of the mountain man's big game. And this is the realm in which the Wapiti, or Elk's Throne, sits. As they say up here, a man afoot is no man at all. And Laramie Sasquatch Miller means to be on horseback. You know, a scout here, he's just your normal quarter horse. But when it comes to these mountains, there ain't nothing really normal about him. He'll carry me around these mountains all day long. <laughs> right up next to a bear and the sun of a gun wouldn't blow up. Some equate the mule with the hazardous and the ludicrous combined in equal proportions, but Laramie knows better. You know, these mules are something else. They're a cross between a horse and a donkey, but they have the best traits of both animals. You don't have to shoe them because they've got hard feet just like a donkey. And they've got tons of sense when it comes to, you get on the side of a mountain, they won't blow up and hurt themselves. A horse will blow up and might knock both of you off the cliff, but a mule, he's smart enough not to do that. The biggest key when you're packing a mule like this is you want to make sure you get both your sides even, and you want to make sure you get it really tight or you're going to have one heck of a rodeo. They're an amazing critter. That's why I always pack with them, because they're so durable you don't have to worry about anything else. With his backstring, Sasquatch heads into the high country, where the Wapiti bugle with rage and lust. Laramie has his own elk bull bugle. He's made by hand. He commences with a buffalo horn. For the cover, he traces and cuts buckskin by hand. He even fashions his own natural glue himself. The heart travels, they say, at the pace of a horse, giving Laramie time to prepare for the hard country ahead. And it was always hard country for the mountain men who came before Laramie. They needed all their tools, from hawking to skinning knife, just to stave off starvation, and their traps to make their fortunes. Every bend in the river held another promise and another peril as they plunged into mapless territory where they met the red man who could be friends or deadly foes and always only from waited to tear scalps, shatter bones, rip bellies and leave a man alone with only hands and knees to crawl out on. The mountain man, wrote Francis Parkman, lived without a law to protect, a roof to shelter, or a garment of cloth to cover him. Even his hunting weapons he could make himself. What I got here is an Osage orange stave. 
what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get center. That's the first thing you wanna do. Once you've got it shaped, you wanna find center. That way you know how to tiller your limbs. starting to try to split so I need to work it the other way to get it smooth from the other side instead of working down because all it'll do is flake off then your bow's gonna be too skinny and if you haven't figured it out by now what we have here is the makings of a true mountain man longbow all out of one state now at daylight the next day, it's time for Sasquatch to take up his bow and climb to the peaks, the castle of the Wapiti. Pretty cool, if you look right here, you can see where a bear climbed up this tree, running from something. Never drop your gun to hug a Bruin, they say. And Laramie is keeping his bow at the ready and stalking with added care to silence his footfalls as he advances into the territory of the bear. shining mountains the northern rockies it takes only a horse a knife and a rifle or bow for mountain man laramie miller to survive that and keeping his wits about him it's boo boo gotta love the rocky mountains there's no telling what you're gonna walk up on. Look, you got bears like that, and moose, grizzly, wolf, mule deer, whitetail, bighorn sheep, mountain goats, and of course the quintessential animal, the elk. Did Sasquatch just say quintessential? I'm gonna try to sneak around him. I don't wanna bug him too much. Sometimes in the mountains, it's better to know you're alone, especially if company's a bear. Just look out across there. All you gotta do is take one look to know that this truly is God's country. And there's no place I'd rather be. And it is the place that is the true home of the Rocky Mountain Elk in all its stately glory. And these are the parks in which the bull elk advertise themselves and where they bugle their challenge to other bulls to come to battle. But today, in the fall heat, the parks are empty and the slopes fallen silent without the calling of the elk. It's really hot out here. It's probably 70 degrees. And these elk are just like us. When it gets hot, we get lazy. We just want to lay around. We need to get some cold weather to push them down get them talking again, but if it doesn't, it's gonna be dang near impossible. Yet even with the sun blistering down, Sasquatch isn't about to give up the hunt.
a man gets hungry enough, the squirrel can look big, even without antlers. He's taunting me. Might be time to stop squandering arrows. Well, I had plans for squirrel dumplings tonight, but I guess I'm gonna have to find something else to put in them dumplings. can see the backbone of the world from up here, but not an elk that's in range. Every cloud has a silver lining, and these clouds could get elk moving. As you can tell, we've got weather coming in. Well, that's just what the doctor ordered. It's been really hot nasty. These elk haven't been bugling at all. The rut hasn't hit. Well, hopefully that weather will bring a cold front and turn them bulls on. Well, I got the weather I wanted. <laughs> It's time to go find a nice warm spot under a tree somewhere. Get the heck out of this before we get too cold. When it's coming down like this, you find the closest pine tree and get out of that rain, because, well, lightning too. <laughs> I tell you what, I'd rather be underneath a tree than out in the middle of the open right now. <laughs> are high up in the northern mountains, Laramie Sasquatch Miller has bears to contend with and wild, blustering weather. But it's a storm that may bring out the elk. Nothing like fall in the Rocky Mountains. You know, the worst thing you can do is stay wet in the woods, so I need to go find a place to start a fire and dry out my clothes. Like some good old fat back. They call it the high lonesome for good reason. Gives a man room to contemplate his future or his fate. In these harsh climes, survival dangles from a silk thread, and game is a magical thing that can disappear without reason, leaving a man to starve or resort to desperate measures, meaning sometimes his best friend, a horse, may have to be sacrificed. But there are other times when he and his fellows gather telling tall tales around the campfires, trying not to think what the cost of survival might have been. 
Up here, a mountain man's best friends are not always human or even animal. A good fire can be a lifesaver and a great comfort. But before the elk was the making of the bow. As you can see, I got this bow just about where I want it. And the rest of my tillering is going to be done with this raft to fine tune everything and make this bow look pretty. Okay, what I'm going to do before I put that glue on the back of this bow is I'm just going to rough it up a little bit so that that glue will be able to adhere better to the wood. Well, as you can tell, this doesn't happen overnight. What you want to do, you want to do one limb at a time and don't be stingy with your glue. I mean, make sure you put plenty of glue on there. Okay, and what you do now is you want to let this set up so that it'll dry and that sinew will actually stay. Then you put another layer of glue and another layer of sinew. Along the crest of the Rockies, Laramie Sasquatch Miller is tracking elk through the last sweltering days of fall until the weather breaks. Now, Laramie goes out from camp once more to listen for whatever bugle might be lifted on the wind. What was a good sign suddenly goes silent. You feel that wind switch, it's hitting me right in the back right now. I had that bull bugle down there, but he must have been coming in, the wind switch, he probably smelled me. It's about that time the thermals are changing. You know, in the mountains, the thermals, in the morning, that cold air, is all sinking to the valley bottom, so your wind's blowing down. Well, as soon as that sun comes up and it starts warming up, the hot air starts rising. And so your wind will switch and it'll start blowing back up the mountain and we got caught right in the middle of it. It's one thing about the Rocky Mountains, them thermals will mess you up. You can never fool an elk's nose. Mom used to always tell me, when you hear you three times, see you twice, they'll only smell you once. At last, there in the brush, the bull's coming. He's coming down that hill.
had a compound, he would have been dead. This whole longbow, 30, 35 yards, that's my max. I told myself before I even came out here, that was my max. It's tempting to take that shot when he's right there, but if you're not comfortable with it, don't take it. That's the ethical thing to do. Well, he won tonight. I'm going to back out of here. I don't want to blow him out of here. I want to come back and hunt him tomorrow. Laramie Miller returns to the company of his fire. The night drapes a black cloak around his shoulders, and the only sound is the roar of the fire and the sizzling of the fat back in the kettle. Tomorrow, at first light, Sasquatch will pick up his bow again and be off to the shining mountains. On the trail of the Wapiti and freedom. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. High up in these shining mountains, Laramie Sasquatch Miller has a mission. He faces the altitude and the weather because meat is needed before winter, and the elk have proven wary. But he presses on, knowing that his arrow is meant to find its target. Among the skills Laramie's drawn from the wilderness is the art of bow making. With a stave of Osage orange and a few hand tools, he's fashioning a weapon that'll serve him well. What I got here is I've got some hide glue. I've got a pot double boiling down here. And what that is is you put a smaller pot inside a bigger pot so that you don't get too high a temperature to wind up burning or messing up this hide glue. Then once that hide glue gets to the consistency of about honey, then it's ready to use. I'm going to take it off, let it cool just a little bit so that it's just lukewarm when you're putting it on because you don't want it to cook your sinew. Laramie is proving that all parts of an animal are of use as he takes the tendons and ligaments to make sinew for backing his bow. This is the last step. For now, I'm going to set it aside and let this bow sit and cure for two to three weeks. So let this sinew dry really good so that I'm not trying to string it and it's breaking that bond that's being made between the wood and the sinew. Work for Sasquatch is hardly over though. There are elk still to tend to. That moon's up, that means the milk are out feeding. A lot of people don't realize, but you need to plan strictly around the moon. When it's up, the elk are up, moving around and active. When it's down, they're sleeping. It don't matter if it's day, night, morning, they move strictly with that moon. So it looks like we need to get hunting. Fresh from last night, hook. That's fresh from last night. That's a good sign. 
Sasquatch loves the smell of elk droppings in the morning. There's a lot of elk sign coming up and down this creek. We've already come up about 800 feet. I'm try to stay along this creek so it'll muffle my sound because it's really loud in there. It sounds like you're walking on a bunch of potato chips. There's elk in here, we just gotta find one. Other moccasin feet have made silent steps on these trails, not wanting to waken harsh fate. For the mountain man, winter could be the starvation time. The frozen weather could make him so wolfish, he'd eat the inner bark of pines and fir trees, the way the Indians taught him. But those same Indians saw torture as an honorable thing to do to enemies. And more than one mountain man was buried to his chin in the sun, his eyelids sliced off, or his own cut off part stuffed into his mouth and his lips sewn shut. And the bear was always waiting to lift him into the air with its jaws, claw down to the white of ribs, break bones the mountain man had to set himself, or let the flies blow his rotting flesh so maggots could clean it. Then he'd be left to crawl out of the wilderness. It's definitely a bull bed. You can tell because that piss is real musky. It's cool, so he hasn't been here for a while. It's probably made last night or early, early this morning. I'm gonna get some of that dirt and rub it on myself as a cover scent. As we said, Sasquatch loves the smell of, well, you get the idea. It's a cow call, and it's done the job. High up in the backcountry, Laramie Miller's hunt for elk continues. He's in a spot thick with elk, but that makes the bulls no less wary. The alertness of an elk can't be overestimated, and it takes no more than a breath of wind to carry Laramie's scent. You know, these critters are pretty amazing how smart they are. For instance, I've walked down trails and run into bears sitting downwind of a trail so they can smell what's coming down. Elk and coyotes and everything else, they do the same thing. You try to call them in, they always circle downwind. They'll get that wind in their favor and then come up to you. That way they can smell you way before you ever really see him. You have to account for that every time you set up. Back at his cabin, Sasquatch continues the process of bow making, but now it's the arrows. What I got here is some willow shafts, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some arrows out of these. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna peel all the bark off of them and cut them to approximately what length you're gonna need. So I'm gonna cut these at 32 inches, then I'm gonna tie them together and set them in a corner of a room or outside, wherever, and let them dry. Let them dry for at least two, three weeks. Once these arrows are dry, I'll take them over to the fire. I'll have some crooked spots in them, heat them up, bend them back, and then I'll get some sandstone and sand them down real good. I got a turkey wing feather here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split it down the center and then I'll cut it in half and that's gonna be two of my fletchings on an arrow. What I did here is I dipped this feather in some hide glue and then I'm trying to fletch it. Well, 
I do believe my fletching could uh, use a little work. It's definitely one of the tougher things I've done, and I give kudos to the Indians because when they did it, it was a work of art. When Sasquatch did it, it was a work, but I don't know how much art was involved. Could use a little work. Now, the work is climbing back to the high country on the quest for elk. Right there goes to show you how high up in elevation they are. You got some bighorn rams up there on the ridge line. The thing you gotta worry about when you get up in elevation like this is altitude sickness. The only cure for altitude sickness is de-elevation. You better get your butt down that mountain. When you're packed way back up in here like me, getting your butt down that mountain ain't as easy as it sounds. What happens is you get pulmonary edema, your lungs fill up with water, you're done for. You ain't getting out, you'll pass out and they might find you a couple weeks or a couple years later. It's nothing to mess with. Make sure you drink a lot of water and always watch out for altitude sickness. At least Laramie has meat, for now. There's a ton of elk sign right here. Saw a bull up at the top of this this morning. I'm hoping that they went bedded over here and they're gonna circle around and come right back out here and feed. If they do that, we're in good shape. If they come out up there, it's gonna be a waiting game. It's the sound of a cow calling that always gets a bull's attention. And one bull answers. Followed by the bugle of a second. Two bulls in two different places answering his calls. Laramie has to decide which one offers him the better chance. Laramie Miller's hunt goes on with the elk ever wary to every scent and sound. There is frustration in it, but the odds still seem good for Laramie. Now he has two bulls bugling from two different directions and has to choose which to go after. If you look right here, you can see a bull started to make a wallow. He was raking it with his horns and pawing it with his hooves. He didn't quite get to finish. Somebody must have interrupted him. I wish it was me. <laughs> been fighting. They got this whole area just tore up. We're right in their bedroom now. Up here, even Laramie has to be aware of altitude sickness. The 
The green mountains may promise springs and creeks, but not all the mountain man's days were passed up yonder. In those days, the parched country from west of the Missouri to the slopes of the Rocky Mountains was called the Great American Desert. And a mountain man who could live weeks without a bite of jerky or a crumb of hardtack could die of thirst in days with a swallow of water. So he sucked on pebbles and chewed on the pulp of cactus or drank the liquid from the paunches of the buffalo. And when the worst loomed, sentiment had to be put aside. And the best that could be done for a man's best friend was to strike hard and clean and swift and then whisper a quiet prayer over the whitening bones of a boon companion. I can really smell the elk in here. There's beds all over the place and a bunch of rubs. I'm gonna sneak down here and set up and call and see if I can't call a bull in. Big bulls got some cows. He's not wanting to join our party, so I guess I'll go crash his. I'm gonna have to move down there closer. hunt for elk goes on. The steep slopes are rich with sign, and it seems inevitable that an elk will appear for Laramie to draw down on with his longbow. It's a dead elk walking, buddy. Well, as you can see, we didn't quite get the shot on film, but Sasquatch is hungry. He needed to get some meat on the ground. You can see right here where he spun out, took off running down the mountain. You can see blood on the log. Look at the blood on that tree. There he is right there. Oh, it's gonna be elk backstraps for dinner tonight. There ain't nothing better than that. 
If you look at this, he must have got hit when he was in velvet. He's all squirrely on this side. That is cool. Before darkness falls, there's no time to quarter the elk, so Laramie must leave it overnight, hoping its scent won't carry to some other hunter of these mountains that might be waiting for him when he returns. At least, if there's a bear or lion on the elk, Laramie will find out at a safe distance, knowing that if your horse doesn't want to go there, neither do you. Well, all the fun's over, now the work begins. But I tell you what, it sure will taste good. This is when a man thanks the Lord for having created horse flesh. table side service for Sasquatch without any tables. You know, Mother Nature's pretty amazing. You take rocks, for example. Most people look around and they see rocks. Well, I look around and see tools. Everywhere you look, there's tools. You just got to recognize them. And the Sasquatch made brick oven. Out east, you pay big money for a steak like that. With his winter's meat taken, there's more that lies ahead for Laramie Miller. More trails to break and game to hunt. But first... Now I gotta figure out how to get the hell out of here. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. The season is new, but already Laramie Sasquatch Miller's gone to the summits in search of the Wapiti, the elk. He's challenged the black timber, and gotten within bow range of one bull before it broke and ran. Another bull comes to the call to take its place, and Laramie has to remain patient and wait for the perfect shot. He's brought down his elk for the year, and now it's time to move on to even bigger game. I got a question for you. Where can you find the highest density of moose per square mile? Right here. This is moose country. Low bogs and willows, stands of spruce. For Alces Alces, the world's largest deer, this is what heaven looks like. 
and same for the moose hunter. Hard to believe, but that's the love song of the forlorn moose. And it looks like a young gentleman's come a-callin'. That's a true piece of American history Sasquatch has brought to his shoulder. They call it the Hawkin, and it was the dream of every mountain man to possess one. Already, Laramie has set his hawk on a task with moose in the Canadian woods. There's no mistaking those giant paddles moving through the trees. About a high 57, 58 inch bull. I'm tickled to death. And proud of his rifle, as he should be. St. Louis brothers, Jacob and Samuel Hawkin, crafted the first famed gun bearing their name in 1823 and changed the mountain men's lives. For hunting, their Rocky Mountain rifle had more range and accuracy and hit harder than the far longer and heavier Kentucky rifle. Typically, between 50 and 53 caliber, Hawkins could be chambered as large as 68 caliber, big enough to drop any buffalo or bear in its tracks. Never mass produced, each rifle was made by hand. An original Hawkin is today worth $50,000, and even Indians were envious and respectful of the Hawkin. That's a piece of American heritage. This gun right here is actually made off the exact plans of the original Hawkin. There was only less than 300 of them made originally. You know, whenever you hear about mountain men or you think about mountain men, what do people think about Jeremiah Johnson and the Hawkin rifle? It's like the staple of the mountain men. And there's quite a few replicas out there, but this is an actual true Hawkin. I take this gun out hunting, I want to shoot a few shots through it so that I can kind of season the barrel and make sure it's on. They call them buckhorn sights for obvious reasons. I do believe that'll do some damage. That's the nice thing about these round balls. They destroy anything in their past. They expand and they'll blow through, for instance, this tree blew clean through that tree. Well, what do you think it's gonna do to an animal? It's pretty good. First shot fired out of this gun, dead on. Can't beat that. a genuine hawking and you can't get no better and this one has proven it can shoot now it's time to see how it'll do on a moose got a real good frost last night as you can see there's lots of fog on the lake so the plan is to ease around the edge of this lake and call and see if we can't get a ball to answer us and then go from there
something wrong. Maybe because our Canadian moose start saying A after every call. Then they might understand me. I'm not enunciating properly, I think. Enunciating. Now that's a $5 word out of a rawhide purse. They say to keep your powder dry, but Mother Nature isn't having any of the bargain. At last, there's a break in the weather. Maybe it'll get the moose moving. at hunting country, he knows it's not all created equal. Anybody that's spent a lot of time in the woods and a lot of time hunting, you know the best way to take a mature animal is to hunt the edge. And the edge is your transition from feeding to bedding. You look out there and then moose are gonna be transitioning. Then bulls are gonna work the edges of meadows like this. We just got done hunting elk. What happened? We hunted the edge and we got lucky. That's where all the elk were hanging out right before dark and right at daybreak. They were hanging out in the edge. They weren't up above tree line. They weren't in the meadows. They were on the edge. That's the best place to hunt and take mature animals. Keeping the wind in his favor, Sasquatch moves deeper into moose territory. hoping to trap a wolf for a warm pelt for the winter. This is perfect. You can see this game trail. The wolves have been coming back and forth right here. There's some wolf tracks down there in the creek bed. It's the perfect spot to set up a bait. But bringing bait to a site is only the first step in trapping a wolf. with the densest population of moose in the land. And they're answering his calls. His hawking is firing through. Now he only needs a shot. Molten lead dipped from a pot, poured into a mold. Round balls just like the mountain men used. and the right gun to shoot him. Many considered the Hawken the Stradivarius of firearms. Master craftsmen, the Hawken brothers used the finest walnut and maple for stocks, turning out only a score of elegant rifles a year. Indian bows were more rapid fire, but the mountain man's Hawken could reach out to 200 yards giving him a superior range of protection. The Hawken was also the great equalizer when the mountain man met old Ephraim the bear. With Kentucky rifles, it took a squad of hunters to stop a Bruin, but one man with one Hawken 
could stand his ground on a bear trail. Now, it's time for Laramie to check his wolf bait. I do believe we're in business. Mountain man trail camera. Got my bait here, something's been hitting it. I don't know if it's the crows or what, but I put this mud in front. That way when whatever it is comes up, steps in the mud, I'll know exactly what it is. All that's left to do is wait now. Campfires in the life of a mountain man. How many sleeps under the stars on the trail that is his life? <laughs> Looks like old Mother Nature's got up on the wrong side of the bed. You know, last night was probably one of the most miserable nights I've ever had in my life in the woods. I can deal with rain and snow. Wind is just horrible. It cools you off faster than anything. The wind was blowing so hard last night, I heard trees crashing down all around me. I guarantee you the moose weren't moving. densest population of moose, Laramie Sasquatch Miller carries his hawk and gun. Here, he hunts the edges and hopes the rain and wind lay down so the moose get up and start moving. Got my heart rate going, the wind's blowing and the tops of the trees were hitting. Thought there was a bull coming through the woods. This thick bush is anything but conducive to still hunting, but Laramie has another alternative. Note the smooth and graceful manner in which Sasquatch enters a canoe. My, my luck, now I'm gonna see a big moose. My powder's probably wet, my gun's gonna misfire. Well, since how the water's a little too rough to be canoeing anywhere, I'm just gonna go in here, sit down and call. That's about all I can do. All that Sasquatch can do is hope his powder stayed dry. There's 
there's a meadow down here in the bottom of this canyon. There's quite a bit of moose sign up on both sides of this canyon, so I'm gonna go sit right at the edge of that meadow and see if I can't call one of them bulls out. Sit there till dark. That's about our best bet. The wind was horrible today. Rain. I've never seen clouds move so fast in my life. With all the bad weather, it's actually a beautiful evening, so hopefully the moose will start moving. a sign all around this big bog. Saw a huge moose track over here. Figured a great spot to sit in the evening. Hopefully one will come out. We can call him in. All you can do is try. goes on and the minutes turn into hours and the sun sinks toward the horizon and then the sound of hope It's as fine a shot as a man with a hawking could ask for. The wet powder fails to fire, and Laramie has to scramble to put on a new cap. fire, no smoke. As you've probably seen, I fell out of the canoe into the water. All my powder is trenched. thing for Sasquatch is that his moose hunt carries on. that the mountain man sought to find. And today, that spirit's embodied in Laramie Miller, Sasquatch. He springs from the era when the trails were new and survival hinged on the ability of a man to make his own way in the wilderness. Sasquatch kindles the spark of the time when men in buckskin roamed these summits. He leaves his prints where no one has since centuries before, hunting for the old spirit of the country, living by his own devices, meeting the wilderness on its own terms.
So he rides the trails in search of the dream of outer solitude and lives the way men once did on the trail of the mountain man. Across the old maps, there is one place with the densest population of moose on the continent. For Laramie Sasquatch Miller, moose country has been a challenge, not least because of the harsh weather. But you've got to say that some of the problems have been of his own making. Knowing my luck, now I'm gonna see a big moose. My powder's probably wet and my gun's gonna misfire. And like a self-fulfilling prophecy, a young moose appears out of the thick bush. And as Laramie predicted, his soaked hawking fails to fire. used to be gunpowder. Now it's powder paste. <laughs> it's not in Sasquatch's nature to give up though, and he carries his hunt on through the territory of the moose, determined to set the scales right. and nights on the trail stretch forth. And as Laramie calls and stalks, once again the skies blacken and weather sets in, threatening the chance of another misfire. After the rain comes the wind, which may be even worse for hunting. Watch over there and that wind's whipping in that meadow. What that does is that makes these moves. They just want to stay in the woods. They don't want to come out because it lowers all their senses. Everything starts moving so they can't see very well. They can't smell anything because the wind's blowing every which direction. They don't move. It makes it tough on us. As tough as the wind is, the old mountain men faced far worse hardships. The mountain man's quest for the golden fleece, which is what beaver pelts were, drove him deep into the traditional and ancient country of the Indian. Here, he was an interloper, and the true lords of the land were the red men. Proud, noble warriors, they could also be vengeful attackers if they caught a mountain man in their realm. Their bows and arrows and lances could be more savage and deadly than a single shot rifle. And a mountain man killed by a primitive weapon was the lucky one. Taken alive, he could face scalping, flaying, fingers chewed off by Indian women, ears torn from his head, tortured by fire, severed organs stuffed into his mouth as he bled to death. All that was just part of the cost of doing business in the fur trade. Laramie's kept his scalp up to now, but the task of taking the moose still remains undone. This cow means a bull might be close behind. And sure enough. Weather 
and wet powder have conspired against Laramie Sasquatch Miller on his hunt for moose. Now he's spotted a cow, meaning a bull is sure to follow. just has to stop for an instant. <laughs> Didn't stop. of wayward moose hunting, Laramie lays down his hawking and picks up his longbow. He'd like to be able to put some chicken in the pot. That was pretty neat. You look, this is an old timer's refrigerator. This is probably 150 years old, maybe 200 years old. What they did is they used to put all their goods, their meat, whatever they wanted to stay cool, they'd put it down here. And the thought is you get down underground and they use this still use it in a lot of places but it keeps it about 20 degrees cooler than it is outside and it won't let it freeze in the winter so it acts exactly like a refrigerator pretty cool rough grouse right there for laramie like the old mountain men finding fresh meat is vital Being a mountain man is not all it's cracked up to be all the time. You might go long periods of time without eating or eating very little. You got to learn to ration your food. I've got two potatoes left. The big game hunting has been horrible. Small game hasn't been much better. <laughs> I got to figure something out. Hunting slow, Laramie has time to work on his gear back at the cabin. This right here is a pair of buckskin pants that I made. They're uh, made out of elk skin, an elk that I killed last year. Laramie's tools are the traditional ones of the leather worker, skinning and draw knives. With them, he carries out the long process of fleshing the hide to remove all the fat and meat, drying and scraping over the course of many weeks. the hide right you're gonna wind up with big hard spots all over it gouges holes all your work's gonna be for nothing if you look this is a perfectly done hide it's soft all over there's no hard spots there's no gouges no holes it's beautiful it's a beautifully done elk hide Genuine bone needle is what's needed for sewing elk hide. As you can see, I made a little notch all the way around and that's for a specific purpose. I'm finishing it off with some belt loops. The mountain men back in the day, they didn't really have a belt loop per se. They wore their belts on the outside of their big coats. Well, I like to have a belt loop. I can't stand when my pants are sagging down, so. And then I'm gonna put a couple buttons so that I have my flap. And I just wanna mark this right here so that I know where to poke my holes for the horn. 
and to make sure that that stays on and I'll put a little dab of hide glue on this knot on the horn and that way that leather stays on that horn. Now if you look right there that's uh, the bolt hole from where this elk lost its life to give me these pants and feed me all winter. <laughs> Vista. You're seeing the place with the densest moose population in North America. As abundant as the moose are, Laramie Sasquatch Miller has struggled to get a shot at one. He didn't stop. distant meadow, but what can't be seen is that there is no straight line to it. Exactly what I was afraid of happened. <laughs> Spotted a bull about, oh, two and a half miles, way over there. And of course, I've got to go after him. But it's not just two and a half miles. I've got to go all the way around the lake. This ought to be fun. an hour and we're halfway so hopefully he's still there when we get there if not it's gonna be a long cold night turns, as he always does, to traditional methods, building a genuine wickiup from natural materials. This is what you call a wickiup. What it is, it's like a miniature teepee. What I did is I took the sticks, I tied them with a willow at the top, and tied them real tight. And then I laid pine brows underneath because I like how pine brows hold the warmth in. And then I layered it with grass on the outside. But the Indians, they mainly used to just wrap it with grass all the way around, really thick. You see tribes in Africa still do this. They make wickiups the exact same way as the Indians used to. And it's gonna make me a nice little home for the next couple days. shelter and a bright campfire, Laramie now only needs a bull moose to step into range of his hawking. of bright waters. Laramie Sasquatch Miller, needing meat for the winter, has faced misfires and bulls who will not cooperate. Winter's coming, 
and he must put something on the ground. Despite some recent bad history with canoes, Laramie knows that if he's going to find a bull, he needs to dip his paddle into the river and glide along the water highway. The best way to get into true wilderness is by canoe, because you have no roads, you have no trails, but there's always rivers. And that's the way the mountain men did. They traveled up and down hauling their pelts from one place to another and a lot of it was either horses or canoes. are hanging out in here. The thing about buckskins, as Laramie knows, is that they make for silent stalking. Those goo gaws in the moose's antlers show he's been tearing at the brush in a rutting fury. and a solid hit. <laughs> now the real work begins. Skinning and quartering a 1,200-pound moose is a Sasquatch-sized job. Just the hide alone can weigh over 100 pounds. From moose country, Laramie has far more of a continent to trek and more game to seek. hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. 
Informed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. This season's been mixed for Mountain Man Laramie Sasquatch Miller. He's ridden the high country on the trail of the Wapiti, the elk, hunting has been hard, but he's brought his longbow to full draw, and his arrow has flown true. With his elk brought down, Sasquatch turns his attention to the world's largest deer, the moose. But a nickel's worth of percussion cap is the difference between four quarters in the larder and four hooves on the ground. Now it's the Badlands and the high bounding mule deer. Those snow-clad summits have always called the Sasquatch, but he's come down from them now to trek the Badlands on the trail of the deer with very large and long ears. Those were the words of William Clark for the first mule deer famed mountain man John Coulter killed on the expedition of the Corps of Discovery. And Clark went on to call it a curious kind of deer with its round white tail ending in a black tip and its springing gait. Now Laramie Miller's ready to meet this curious deer himself. Laramie gets into range, then has to decide if this is the deer he truly wants. With the buck left to grow another year, Laramie makes his way back to his cabin. There's a chore that needs doing. I had a bit of a blowout. I'm getting too big for my clothes. I cut a piece of elk skin. I'm warming up some hide glue. Got this piece of hide. Spread glue all over it. And I'm gonna glue it on there. Now I'll just let it dry and I'm good to go. Got my shirt patch. Should last me for another season. It's not so much the fit that survive, but those willing to do what it takes to survive. The mountain man depended on many tools, from hawk and rifle to new house number four beaver traps to Green River knife. But when it comes to a mountain man's best friend, there is no substitute for his horse. They say a white man rides a horse till it dies. Then an Indian comes along, gets that horse back on its hooves, rides it another 50 miles, then eats it. But a mountain man was the equal to the Indian in the use he got out of his horse in harsh country. And there were times his horse was the key to his survival. Not for where it carried him, but for what it supplied. In dire straits, you slaughtered your horse and drank its blood. Then you skinned it and hacked it into meat for food to sear over the open fire. You shared what you had with your fellow mountain men and hoped that one would let you ride double when the morning came. His 
buckskin mended, Sasquatch continues his hunt for the half-assed deer, as its Latin name, Hamionis, calls it. And the young doe he sees is a good sign, because bucks are sure to be near. Everywhere the does go, Laramie is sure to follow, hoping they lead him to the bucks. deer over here there's five or six different bucks two different herds at last a buck but is it big enough for Sasquatch This warm, dry weather makes for hard hunting, but under the looming shadow of an empty meat bowl, Laramie's still not ready to settle for just any buck. bucks. I want to get, try to get something that's four and a half, five and a half years old. So we'll keep after it. Decided to come down out of the mountains and lose a little elevation. Heading down into the Badlands. I tell you what, this country, it's open, but it's rugged. And lots of places for these critters to hide. Lots of draws, lots of coolies, lots of pockets, and a ferocious wind to carry a man's scent and betray his presence. I can see some bucks chasing does down clear across the canyon, so I'm gonna drop in here. Go get a better look at them. Hopefully there's a big one in there yet. The rut's on, so that's a good sign. Just jumped a buck and about six does right here. I walk 100 yards and jump four more does. They are freaking spooky. I'm gonna have to be really careful. I'm gonna have to take it slow. The wind not only carries scent, but it puts the deer on edge. big country and a man needs long legs to cover it and seek out where the deer are hiding. And as open as the country looks, the deer can hide in plain sight in it. Laramie has a lot of treeless ground to cross to get where the deer are. Keep moving on. By staying in the draws, Laramie hopes to wind his way into the range of this cliffhanger buck. When Laramie comes out of the draw, he's where the deer aren't. They've already pushed on. Well, I saw a lot of deer today, but it's not that four and a half, five and a half year old buck I'm looking for. just about dark, but there's always tomorrow. You can look around, this is some absolutely gorgeous country. It's different than almost anything I've ever hunted. Like, but there's a reason they call it the Badlands. The only way to hunt these Badlands is the hardest way there is, with so little cover, and that is by spot and stalk. Suddenly, Mother Nature has a gift for Laramie. Well, 
as you can tell, the landscape changed a little bit overnight. <laughs> we got a few inches of snow and turned it into a winter wonderland. But that's going to help the hunting. We'll be able to see them deer. They'll stick out like a sore thumb. Plus, it should get that rut kicked in. They should start moving a lot. So, go give her heck. Now, here's the situation. I can still see two does down there, but last time I saw the buck, he was moving to the left. He was going up the ravine. So I think with the way the wind's blowing, the best thing to do is I'm going to drop down, go over this ridge and circle all the way around this knob and come in from the downwind side and hopefully get lucky. There are deer in sight, but still out of hawking range. So Laramie has to close the gap. It's a waiting game for the big game. Against a fresh white blanket of snow, the deer stand out like beacons. Now Laramie has to wait for them to make the next move before he can get to Hawkins shooting distance. time with when it comes to hunting is patience. <laughs> At last, the deer get up and go the way Laramie expects, except the buck makes an unbelievable turn to scale a sheer rock wall. This awesome buck got him bedded up, waiting for him to make a move. And I have no clue what happened, but all of a sudden they all decide to get up and take off running. Well, instead of the buck following the does, the buck takes off and freaking tears off up the side of the mountain. Away from us, pretty much, we have no chance. <laughs> If you can't laugh, you shouldn't be out here, I guess. <laughs> Again, Laramie has deer in sight. And it's time to prime his rifle. noise in nature is a volcano erupting. What? But that's a mouse squeak compared to the sound of a misfire with a buck in your sights. <laughs> well, Laramie, at least you get to admire the way they run. Or in the mule deer's case, the way it bounces. A 
As soon as the deer ducks out of the line of sight behind the ridge, Laramie puts on his running moccasins. Then another buck pops up, drawing Laramie's attention. To get to the top of the hill and into range, Laramie uses the contours of the land to screen his stalk. sneak up as quiet as I can and get to the top and peer over. It should only be 80 yards right there. Now, will the old smoke pole perform? Badlands blanketed in white, Laramie suffers a misfire. The buck escapes for the time being, but Laramie's not done, not by half. It's a good buck. Now, will the Hawken ignite? This is the hardest part about this whole deal is I've got a nice buck bedded down at 80 yards. But I gotta wait for him to stand up to get a shot. It'll really test your patience. We've been sitting here for over an hour. That buck hasn't moved. He's bedded with that doe. I sure hope he decides to move sometime soon because both my legs are numb. those antlers. Look at the deer. Look at the killing spot. Don't think about that misfire. Remember the angle and squeeze. Just inches lower and a shade to the right. It's high speed loading, but the deer moves too fast and too far. With that deer vanishing into the Badlands goes a piece of Laramie's spirit. We have worked our butts off to get that close to a good deer. <sighs> this just ain't my year. <laughs> was it that said they had made many a fine meal out of eating crow? At least for Laramie, climbing back into the mountains he loves, there is tastier fare to hunt for his supper. No, those aren't chicken tracks, but the rough grouse that made them will eat just fine. Grouse dumplings tonight, my favorite. And there's dinner. Well placed shot, didn't even ruin any meat. Oh, these rough grouse, they're the best grouse to eat. If you look at that meat, it's almost white. 
which is real similar to a chicken. Most of your other grouse, it's really dark meat. These rough grouse, they're a delicacy, boy. I'm excited, I'm gonna eat good tonight. It's not mule deer, and there's not much of it, but it is sure delicious to a famished hunter. With a full belly, it's time for Sasquatch to dream of other hills and mountains, of new country with new game, and the one animal they say walks like a man. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. The mountain trails led Laramie Sasquatch Miller into the heart of mule deer country. But the dry ground made for tough stalking into hawking range. It took the new snows to prepare the land for a hunt out on the Great Plains. And several times, Laramie is almost in reach of a good buck. But as they say, you don't learn much when everything goes right. another animal waiting for Sasquatch, the one who walks like a man, Brother Bear, who gives hide for warmth and meat, and especially fat for nourishment, vital in all seasons. echoes out over the glassy lake waters, telling Laramie that where there are moose, there are also bear. Here in the deep woods, the ancient highways have always been on the waters. And as the fog burns away, Laramie has a perfect view of the shore to spot for bear. When you're trying to hunt bears in country like this, it's so thick, the best way to get around is in a canoe. You can cover so much more country. If you tried to walk through this thick brush, you'd be lucky to cover a mile in three hours. I've already covered five, six miles this morning. It's time now for Laramie to put into shore and begin a still hunt for black bear. Some might choose to hunt over bait, but Laramie will meet the bear on its own terms. The tints of autumn are beginning to appear, lighting up the trees like golden candles. Right here, you can see some fairly fresh bear tracks. And one kind of rule of thumb when you're looking at a bear track, you see this bear track is probably about two inches wide on its pad. 
That means it's probably about a two-year-old bear. Probably 100, 110 pounds. Definitely not what we're after. Where there's little bears, there's big bears. And it was the big bears that played a fateful role in the lives of many a mountain man. There's no telling how many mountain men vanished down the maws of the bears. For all the dangers of the trail, the bear was the most feared. It had jaws as powerful as the strongest steel trap, and a single rifle ball was not likely to stop or even slow it. With its raking claws, it could tear the flesh from a man's torso and limbs and crush his ribs with its great weight. Some men sewed back their own scalps and torn ears or set their own bones. Some even used maggots to clean festering wounds. Many, though, simply died agonizing deaths in the clutches of the bear. As the days grow shorter, the habits of the bear begin to change, as Laramie knows. If you want to be a good hunter, you have to learn to react and adapt to every different situation. You have to learn to read what signs you're given and react to that if you want to be successful. Every time I go in the woods, I learn something. Right now, these bears, it's late in the year. They're strictly on a vegetarian diet. They're looking for grasses and roots. They have to clog their system up so that they can hibernate. You could set a whole moose carcass out there and they're not going to touch it. So you have to keep that in mind. The only way you can hunt them right now is spotting and stalking. You've got to find the most lush places that are still close to cover where a bear might den up. That's where I'm going to have my best shot. as thick as these, spotting and stalking is about as useful as a parasol is to a pig. When Laramie does see a bear, it's sure to be up close and personal. There's a bear. I can just see him through the trees right there. He already knows we're here. Following the bear, Laramie Miller voyages on watery trails. In the dense woods, he may meet his prey or become prey. smelled us. It definitely knew we were here, but I don't think we alarmed it or scared it. But didn't want to stick around to find out. That's what's so awesome about spot and stock bear hunting. Yeah, you got people who can sit over bait all you want, but when you're out there walking around, then boom, there's a bear. <laughs> That's what makes, makes it all worth it. the hunt for bear, Laramie makes sure he has provisions for the night. The woods full for the taking. Cattail root is actually really good. It, uh, it doesn't taste like chicken, but it's a nice thing to know if you ever find in swampy land like this, you can take a cattail. You just cut the roots off of it, boil them up, and it's kind of like a cabbage. With food in his satchel and ominous weather threatening, Laramie builds a shelter to keep out the night.
Sasquatch knows well the elements of a shelter. It must have stout staves for its ribs, broad branches for its skin, and a fur of long grass to lock in the warmth. That's a little Sasquatch den if I ever seen one. You know, the whole philosophy about building shelters is usually you're in the woods with nothing and you're probably in a survival situation. Well, the biggest two things you gotta watch for is you wanna stay warm and you wanna keep out of the weather. Well, I found a spruce tree here that's gonna act as my roof. That's gonna keep the rain off me. I put sides on it, that'll keep the wind off me. This thing will last for months. I could live in here for as long as I wanted to or needed to. And the need for shelter may come sooner rather than later as the sky boils into angry darkness. You know, when you got wind and rain and crap like this, them animals aren't gonna move. They find the thickest cover they can and they bed down. So I'm gonna do what the animals are doing. In bed down, try to get out of the wind and the rain for the night. Hopefully this weather will pass and have a halfway decent day tomorrow. closes in, Laramie looks for game for dinner. He doesn't want to disturb the area with a shot, so he carries his longbow. That was bad. I lost an arrow and I missed it. <sighs> At least the weather holds off as Laramie prepares to make a gourmet meal out of literally roots and berries. Looks like I'm gonna be a vegetarian tonight. You know, vegetarian's old ancient word for bad hunter. <laughs> it may be slim pickings tonight, but there's tomorrow when a fat bear may be waiting around the next bend in the trail. strokes of an oar, Laramie Miller's come into the country of the bear. He's already met his prey, but hasn't had a shot, and not even attempts at small game have succeeded. It's first light under clear skies, and Laramie has kept his powder dry through the night. He has another chance to meet up with Brother Bear in these dense northern woods and maybe take the shot. In this thick timber, Laramie looks for sign, whether tracks or scat. That's all he's likely to see of the bear until he comes face to face with it.
you see daddy lions. The Indians, they used to follow bears around because whatever a bear can eat, you can eat. And there he goes. <laughs> The southbound end of a northbound bear might be a disappointing sight to some, but it could be a relief to many a mountain man. The bear stories Indians told did little to impress Lewis and Clark. No animal, they thought, could be all that they were said to be. It seemed like sheer exaggeration until the day they killed a most tremendous looking animal. With five shots through its lungs and five more lodged in its body, the charging bear scattered the men, roaring ferociously the whole time, where it took 20 minutes to die. The ineffectiveness of their rifles on bears led them to the development of the more powerful Plains rifle. The soft carpet of moss deadens Laramie's footfalls as he closes in. Laramie's Hawken lives up to its name of Smoke Pole, as the bear is enveloped in a black powder fog. calls and missed shots. At last, he's followed the sign and heard the bear's roar. Now, the bear's vanished in a cloud of black powder smoke and Laramie must risk going into impenetrable cover after it. As the light begins to fade, somewhere in the thick brush lies a wounded bear. Try to find wood. is bears, they take a little bit for the blood to show because their hair is so thick. And this bear took off and went into just this thick, thick stuff right away. So the best thing to do, I think, is back out and give them some time. The night is long and dark for Laramie as he thinks of what he must do come the morning. Well, I shot this bear last night. Couldn't see nothing, all the smoke. Couldn't tell which way it went. So we're back in here this morning. I think it took off running this way. So I'm gonna go in there and check. Didn't really feel like playing with a bear if it was wounded in the dark last night. So best bet just to wait it out and now we're back. Let's go see if we can find it.
It's a long walk for a short distance as Laramie prepares to meet his bear. There he is. I wish I'd have walked just a couple more feet last night. Didn't go 30 yards. For Laramie, the true harvesting of the bear begins. To me, the most important thing on this bear, it's not the meat and it's not the hide. It's the fat. Rendered into lard, bear fat is the finest shortening a cook can have, as well as excellent waterproofing for boots and clothes. Well, it finally stopped raining, so now I can stretch this hide and let it dry a little bit. got this hide stretched out, I'm trying to get some of the moisture out of it so that I can flush it really good and pull all the hair out. But when it's spongy like this, it's really hard to do. So hopefully it'll stay nice for a little while and I can dry this hide out. A lush bear hide is no small thing for a mountain man like Sasquatch as he readies for winter. The fall sun hangs on to help dry the hide. Now, Sasquatch can finish fleshing the hide and prepare it for blankets and robes or pouches and gloves. This is the trail that Laramie Miller follows, marked by blazes on trees and in pelts taken. He'll head out yonder to see what there is to discover between the daylight and the dark. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. the mountains, blood of the Indian. He survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. Laramie Sasquatch Miller's season in the wild has carried him to the high country on the trail of the Wapiti. And the feathered arrow from his long bow has given him meat for the winter. Among the densest population of moose in North America, he faced frustration and success with his hawk and gun. There's bear. The one that walks like a man, the bear, fell next. Then, it was mule deer he was after in the Badlands, which lived up to their name. Now, he's on the track of the cat, the mountain lion. In the saddle, and with his dogs, Sasquatch is in the perfect position to be hunting the tracks of the puma, the painter, the cougar. There's nothing like being on a horse in the Rocky Mountains. Can't beat it. And there's just enough snow to make the trailing good. As much as Laramie embodies the spirit of the old mountain man, in the day, he would have looked far different.
The romantic image of the mountain man includes a tangled wild beard, but just the opposite is the case. A beard was a lush pasture for lice, and even more important was its effect on the Indians he met. Indians shaved with clamshells or plucked out hairs to keep their faces clean. Any hirsute white man was a genuine barbarian. So every mountain man invested in a good cutthroat razor and employed it regularly. Bearded or not, Laramie knows the lions won't much care for him either way. That's the dogs giving voice. Some deer hair right here. That's what them dogs are going crazy about. I bet there's a kill right here on this hill. They already got something tree. Let's go check it out. Got a tigger tree. we're looking for, but got a kitten in the tree. <laughs> the cougar. The Cherokee marked it as a sacred animal, but its wail in the night to the Apache sounded from the underworld and meant the approach of death. Even one of tender years can be formidable if cornered. It's just a little year-old kitten. Its papa's around here somewhere, though. You know, not very many people get to see a site like that. That's pretty freaking cool. You know, you would think it, lions aren't quite like bears. They won't come to the rescue of a cub. They hear them dogs and they're long gone. You know, that's a little probably 40 pound kitten, but I guarantee you that thing could do some major damage. It got hold of you. <laughs> We saw a tom track up on the hill, so we're gonna circle around and try to find out where that tom went, and the mom for that matter. See if we can find out where they went and put the dogs on them. Come on, come on. Pretty funny, you look. This my horse tracks coming through not 30 minutes ago. And there's lion tracks right in the center of the horse tracks. <laughs> so that lion had to have followed us through and then she took off up the hill. I'm sure it's the female mother to that kitten we just treat. I saw some deer hair earlier and I didn't even think to look down the hill. If I'd have looked 20 yards down the hill, I'd have seen a whole deer that she had just killed. It ain't but a couple hours old, if that. They haven't even eaten on it yet, so pretty cool. That's the first whole deer I've ever seen that was killed by a lion and not eaten on. I don't think she liked that we treat her kitten. We may have another lion in a tree yet today. Day's still young. Horseback in the Rockies waiting for the dogs to sound off. That's a young lion, but a handful if he were to get a hold of you. We may have another lion in a tree yet today. Laramie treks down through the snow to see what the lions are making a meal of. You look, this is an older buck. He's already lost his horns. That's usually what the cats go after because they're usually traveling alone. Make it easier for the cat. I mean, we jumped, we jumped that cat right off of this kill. Because it's still, it's not even stiff yet. And they haven't eaten any of it. Let's see if I can see where she grabbed it.
broke its neck and the fight was over. <laughs> Probably wasn't much of a fight. I'm gonna grab the dogs and see if we can't get them on this cat. That's the sound of the dogs barking on the track of the cat. Running after lions over rocks and through trees and brush can take its toll on a man's possibles, so he needs to build some protection for him. With a bone needle and some buckskin, Laramie has himself a gun case. And with the abuse the country can dish out, Sasquatch needs to look after his most vital piece of gear. It official. I think those dogs cut a big bobcat track. We're walking the edge of this rim looking for lion tracks and dogs start sounding off. Got excited for a second. Oh, it is a big bobcat. We'll probably go ahead and let the dogs run it out just so they can get some work. The more work, the better. And that'll be more work for the dogs and more work for Sasquatch. Got dogs clean on the other side. A dog is one for carrying his map in his nose. Now it's time for man and hound both to rest their legs. I always have a lot of people ask me what kind of dogs that I run for mountain lion. Well, it kind of depends. For one, you want a dog that's gritty and aggressive and ain't afraid to work hard. A lot of people, they like to run nothing but hound for their nose. And then you got other people that they want a cur dog because they're so much more aggressive and faster. Well, for me, I like to mix them up. I like a crossbreed like this pup right here. This is Kimber, and he's half Catahoula cur dog and half blue tick hound. So he's got the great nose for cold trailing and that aggressiveness to get a cat up a tree a lot faster than a normal hound dog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's a hot track that leads to a young lion. This one gets to growl and hiss all he wants. Laramie has let the cub go and makes camp for the night, readying for another day on the trail of the cougar. The mountain men had no 
nothing but respect for the cougar. They knew he was a man killer who didn't fear leaping into a tent to snatch somebody out. Mountain men liked the lion for another reason. He was fine eating, worth even trading half an elk for. What I'm doing here is I'm walking these ridge lines, and on these ridge lines, them cats will get up on a ridge and they'll walk it out so that they can look off each side. They love to hunt from above. So I'm trying to find some tracks. Tracking was an art many mountain men learned from Indians, but there were other less pleasant lessons too. Indians traded with mountain men in peace. They taught them many of their wilderness ways, shared their lodges, and sometimes their women. But the other side was the mountain men they made slaves of or tortured and killed. They would stake a man out over an anthill or blind him by letting the sun burn into his lidless eyes. They used some as targets for archery practice, scalped them alive, or literally held their feet to the fire, often able to keep a suffering victim alive for days. It was a sign of honor to say someone died well by not screaming out for mercy. Now Laramie's ready to jump onto the trail and follow the baying of the dogs. It's those short, sharp, frantic barks that tell you the dogs think a cat is on a limb. Tree barking is what it's called, though sometimes it's the wrong tree. Well, I don't know what the heck happened. They act like they had something treed, but... We get up to the tree and there's nothing there. There's cat tracks, so I don't know if the cat jumped the tree and they didn't see it or went up that tree earlier this morning and then climbed out and left or what, but there's no cat. Got my excitement up for nothing. don't go and Sasquatch takes it on foot.
this time. It's riding to the hounds, mountain man style. But it's not foxes that are the quarry. This is only a young lion, too young for Sasquatch to consider. So he presses on, breaking trail and gasping for air. A hound with heart can climb as well as any cat and fears nothing. Again, it's a young Tom who just learned you can't bite and chew at the same time. much as anything else, it's the lion's pride that's injured. Well, got up to the tree and there was two cats, two kittens in the tree and one of the dogs got too close and that kitten latched onto them and both fell out of the tree. Now, the dogs and this cat have retired to neutral corners. Well, as you can see, we got a little female kitten up here in the tree, probably a year old kitten. Maybe, maybe a year and a half. But then there was a year and a half old Tom, her brother, and he was in a fighting mood. He got a hold of that dog and he bit off a little more than he could chew. They fell out of the tree and took off down the hill and the dogs were after him. And if them dogs would have caught him, boy, it'd have been over for that kitty cat. Luckily we got him off of it and now we're gonna get out of here. But that little Tom, he got taught one heck of a lesson. His, he's educated, he'll be tough to catch again. But the next couple years, maybe old Sasquatch will have to come in here and see if I can find him again. Let's get out of here before she gets too mad and decides to tap dance on my head. But it won't be another year before Sasquatch is back on the track of a lion. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. For Lair 
Jeremy Sasquatch Miller, it's been rugged cat hunting so far. Yet the dogs have struck a track, despite little snow and sunny, warm conditions. We may have another lion in a tree yet today. Those dogs are hounds and curs, and mixes of the two, and all heart. And young Tom learns not to bite off more than it can chew while 20 feet in the air. That's the price of folly. The hunting of predators is the most difficult of all hunting, with hunting animals sharing all the instincts and abilities of their human counterparts. But Sasquatch knows the need to hunt for predators for the sake of all the other wildlife. When I'm lion hunting, what I'm looking for, I'm not just looking for lion tracks, I'm looking for elk and deer, make sure there's game in the area, because this time of year, if there's elk and deer around, there's gonna be lions, somewhere close. The dogs are cold trailing, now hoping to strike a track. These are some of the worst hunting conditions for mountain lion that you can have. We got a bluebird day, it's warm out here, so the scent is going to be going straight up. It's going to be evaporating so fast that the dogs aren't going to be able to smell it. Unless we catch a fresh, fresh, fresh track, we're going to have a heck trying to catch a lion. We need some snow. For all the terrible conditions, Laramie's still able to find tracks. It's a cat or not, remains to be seen. Well, sounds like they got a track started, but saw a bunch of elk run out of the canyon, so I hope they're not chasing elk. Time will tell. Sasquatch's rendezvous is with lions, but in the 1800s, it would have been of a different kind. The rendezvous replaced the trapper's annual trek to St. Louis to sell their pelts. Into the wilderness, the traders packed goods and cash and carried back furs. The best trappers might earn 20,000 when the annual wage was about 200, and they could spend 1,000 a day at the rendezvous on horses, Indian girls, and raw alcohol. They gambled at cards, races, and shooting sang and danced and fought with fists and knives. Then, bloodied and bruised, got up and did it over again, as mounted Indians galloped, whooping through the camp, and rabid wolves assaulted the wild debauch. Laramie's own rendezvous will have to come later. Now, it's about cats. Smokey, come here. Come on. This scent has grown cold, so it's time to call in the dogs and look for fresher sign. Come here, Smoke. Smoke, come here. Come on. The only thing hot about this trail is the dogs. You look back into the history, read all the stories about the mountain men fighting off grizzlies and having to deal with wolves and all the buffalo and the elk. But one thing you never hear about is cougars. You know they were there, but that just goes to show you how stealthy an animal they really are. They're amazing and they're, not very many people get to see them. And that's what, that's what the coolest thing about it for me is. Yeah, you hear people, oh, well, you hunt them with dogs and the dogs do all the work. Well, the dogs do a majority of the work, but I can promise you it's still one of the toughest hunts if you get out there and try to follow them dogs, there is. It's physical. 
it will beat you up. You're out in the elements. It's cold, it's winter, but it's fun. I love every single bit of it. Beautiful weather to some means tough hunting conditions for Sasquatch. The warm temperatures and old snow make it almost impossible to track. Cute little bobcat tracks. We're looking for his a lot larger than life cousin but he might do if I catch him. It looks like a lot of land, but a male cougar can circle a hunting range of 250 miles or more in a month. You can see these bobcats, they'll come check around all the bottom of these trees for a rabbit sign. And the thing about rabbits is rabbits are habitual. They're like a white-tailed deer. They'll travel, for the most part, the same trail all the time. So these bobcats, they'll go set up on those trails when they smell sign of rabbits. Perfect little ambush. Here, this is elk sinew. And you know, the Indians and the mountain men, they lived by sinew. Sinew, they use sinew for everything, whether it be, you know, sewing, fishing lines, rope, I mean, horse halters, you name it, they used it. You know, the biggest trick when you're braiding sinew like this, you can, this same exact way I'm doing this fishing line, you can do it all the way to a bowstring, rope for your horse, like I talked about. What you wanna do is you take it, you know, pinch it with your fingers. And then you take the top part, twist it away from you, and then you pull it towards you. That way it lays over the top and your other pigtail becomes the top. And then you just, you just keep doing that. Twist it away, pull it over. Now th this one's the top. And then when you're ready to splice a piece in, you just take that piece lay it right here inside and you continue on. The way the weather is right now, it's so warm that the little snow that we do have is leaving fast. I need some more snow to come in because what that snow does is it holds the scent of that track in and makes it a ton easier for the dogs. It's time for Laramie to settle up on his little gray-faced mare and start covering a lot more of that cougar territory. way or risk his mare and him piled up in a wreck at the bottom of a rocky canyon. The blue skies and warm weather are made for poor conditions for hunting lions, 
now, Laramie Sasquatch Miller has to cover ground by foot and on horseback to try to find a hot track. Sounds like they got a tigger tree. You can see a track looks like a dang good cat. Horse even wants to go see it. We better go check it out. Time's a wasting before this lion decides to jump the tree. It's not big old Tom, but that's still pretty freaking cool. Just a big female. I think we treated that same cat last year. It was snowing like crazy when you treat it, but I think it's the same exact cat. I wish it was her boyfriend, but I think my dad used to always tell me, wish in one hand and crap in the other, see which one fills up faster. Time to get out of here before it gets dark. A simple man in search of the world, but not for the one that's under my feet. There'll be a fire tonight of snag wood from old dead trees. The embers will rise, swirling into their own little galaxies as Laramie cooks his meal of wild game. In the dark, he'll rest, alert for the banshee wail of the cat, and be on its tail before light. We've been out here checking tracks since about four o'clock this morning. We just cut a pretty decent track. It's just breaking daylight, turn the dogs loose on it and you already heard them, they just jumped it. This is exactly the kind of fresh snow Laramie has wanted to get on to a lion. Well, you can hear them dogs got that cat treed. Now I just gotta figure out how to get around this big steep canyon. <laughs> We're bluffed out on the other side, so. That's a great sound though. <laughs> There's a tigger on the loose, and Sasquatch is gonna get him. Here, right here's where the cat and the dog ran through, so. We're on it. Decent Tom, you got a big old head on it. season, Laramie says Quatch Miller has ridden the mountain trail. In the high meadows and black timber, he stalked the wapiti and taken a fine bow with long bow and arrow. He's brought in his first winter's meat. Everywhere you look, there's tools. You just gotta recognize it. Other horizons and vistas beckon, and along the shores of wilderness lakes shambled the bear. And 
Amid the densest population of moose on the continent, Laramie's called in lovelorn bulls. Then came the badlands and mule deer, and the turn of a card. on horseback and afoot, through fresh powdered snow and to the baying of hound and cur, Laramie's tracked the cougars to their trees and witnessed dog and lion in pitched battle. With dry ground and warm weather, it's been a long and arduous hunt for both man and dog. Finally, the weather Sasquatch has wanted has arrived, and it's given the dogs the perfect conditions to track the cat. And now Laramie has the chance at a worthy tong. Nothing like first thing in the morning. Sasquatch needs to rustle through his possibles for a pick to clean the touch hole, then press on a new cap. <laughs> Having crafted his hawking by hand, Laramie knows its innards like a watchmaker knows a watch and knows just how to fix his firing problem. Fresh powder, patch, and ball. A new cap pressed tight onto the nipple. A magnificent predator, a rival to Laramie for the wild game he needs, falls in death from the tree. Taking this cat is one of the hard necessities of the mountain man life. Laramie may feel regret, but knows the purpose of it. By killing these cats, what I'm doing is I'm helping out the entire deer, elk population. I'm even helping out the other cats. It's a necessary part. You have to take out and manage your predator population. You know, I think these cats are one of the most magnificent animals there is on the planet, but you still have to hunt them and control the population and manage it right. Now that's a killing machine right there. The mountain men shared a secret about the mountain lion panther meat. Think of fine veal, 
many as the frontiersmen who traded a quarter of elk for a loin of lion. with the delicious meat, Sasquatch will have a fine pelt to stretch on his cabin wall and hold the memories of the hunt, the way a dream catcher captures the dreams from our sleep. In a mug of soup, Laramie can see the land he's trekked and the game he's hunted. Now he looks ahead to new country and new challenges, onward along the Mountain Man Trail. Something hunts these mountains shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountainous blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, He's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed. Sasquatch, Mountain Man. As he surveys the western vistas, Laramie Sasquatch Miller knows there are reasons for all kinds of hunting. Most game we hunt to eat, but some we hunt to maintain the balance. The mountain lion is the purest predator in the wild and a certified man-eater. And hunting is one of the hardest chores a mountain man can set himself. Hard trailing and hard riding are what it takes to find that cat up a tree. Then it takes a clean, deadly shot to bring the lion down without wreaking havoc on man and hounds. Laramie has made his shot. And now he has a classic trophy and delicious, delicate meat. Now, for Sasquatch, it is the heart of the matter of the mountain man life. Trapping's the reason for going out into the mountains and surviving the perils. So, Laramie's out to make his sets. There comes a time of the year when the fur is prime. The traps have hung on the cabin wall long enough. Now the rust must be knocked off of them. These traps were the keys to the vault for the old mountain men. When the craze for beaver felt hats drove the big rodent almost to extinction. Before there were coins of silver or paper dollars, there was the beaver plume, the coin of the realm for the mountain men. And trapping for beaver fur was the way those old mountain men mined for gold. This little dead tree that's leaning up against this bigger one will be a perfect place to set a tree set. And I'll show you how to set. I know I had some people last year asking me exactly how, why, and what I was setting up when I was doing some tree sets. So I'll explain it a little better here, but it's a perfect spot for your pine marten, your fisher cat, any of your smaller meat-eating varmints. See, the most essential thing when you're looking for a set like this is you want to find a tree that's leaning, but you, won't, you don't want any brush underneath because if the animal comes up, gets caught in your trap, and then falls over, you don't want anything for him to grab onto. idea of this is you've got your nails in the tree and you set them there and they're going to hold your trap in place. See, 
Now what I'll do is get your trap set. You wanna put a piece of meat about six or eight inches above. You don't want it too high to where that animal can crawl around the backside and get to that meat. Now the last thing to do is just make me a little tunnel and I'll be good to go. Now you've heard me say it a million times, but always double check yourself and make sure your safeties are off because that's a lot of work for nothing. slice of heaven, at least I hope that's what they think. Sasquatch walks could be the same as that of the most iconic mountain man of all. His name was Jeremiah Johnson, a man, they said, of adventurous spirit suited to the mountains. But he had another name. Johnson took a flathead woman for his wife. And story has it that a band of young crow hunters murdered his wife, setting Johnson on a path of vengeance lasting 25 years. The bravest crow warriors set against Johnson proved no match. Simply killing crow, though, was not revenge enough for Johnson. He would add insult to conquest by eating the livers of the warriors he slew. And without his liver, a crow was lost in the afterlife. Eventually, the crow came to honor liberating Johnson's warrior prowess and made him their brother, ending the long vendetta. For Sasquatch, the trail today is a more peaceful one with fur pelts at the end. If you look right here, you can see that beaver. He's been coming up and down and eating these willows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a lake hold right here on the edge of the water and hopefully I can get lucky and catch him. That's a perfect situation for a water set for these beavers. Look at that, my old honey hole paid off again. Fall is in the air, telling Laramie Sasquatch Miller that the fur on the beaver and other critters is thick and glossy. It's time to set out the traps and reap the harvest. is the fall. The weather in mountains is as changeable as the turn of the cards, washing Laramie in warmth and sun as he goes about the business of trapping. As you can see right here, this tree's already set up. This is one of my hot spots for coon. I've got a lot of coon on this tree. It's ready to go. I gotta put my trap, bait it. I'm good to go. This right here, this is a 220 Connor bear trap. And just like before, you wanna be real careful what you do because it may look small, but that thing's still capable of taking off your fingers. You know, when 
you're setting a trap like this, what you're going to catch in it all depends on what you're going to bait it with. So for this instance, I'm baiting this trap with some sweet smelling stuff. So for the most part, all I'm going to catch is coon. I might get a squirrel or a bird or something like that, but I'm not going to catch a meat eating animal. If you want to catch your fish or cats or you know, any of your other meat eaters, you need to bait it with meat. this is this is gonna make my little tunnel up towards my bait so that the animal has a reason to go into your trap not just because it's there if you give them any reason to avoid it they're going to another reason you do this is you're basically just camouflaging this trap so that that little tunnel of love looks like a tunnel of love instead of a tunnel of steel or looks like a jailhouse What I've got here is I've got my secret little uh, coon bait. It's some sweet smelling stuff. And I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna rub it right above this trap about four to six inches above the trap so that that coon has no reason to go around the trap. He has to go through it. And the last thing you wanna do is you wanna look at a trap and then take your safeties off. <laughs> for a likely spot to make his set for the king of the fur bearers, the beaver. That's a beaver dam, by the way, another public works project of nature's core of engineers. If you look right here, you can see beavers or muskrats have been coming up and down right here in this little runway, coming into where this water flow is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set me a trap right here See if I can get lucky. Oh, well, you look at that, my old honey hole paid off again. The art and science of successful trapping, the care and feeding of a trapper sets, Laramie knows he has to set the table as invitingly as possible to get the furry critters to sit down. And one of the best places to set a trap is on this well-used beaver slide. The Conabare Trap, invented by Canadian Frank Conabare. This is a body gripping trap whose powerful jaws kill instantly. Laramie holds up the trap and keeps it in place by planting a stick in the mud of the beaver pond. Laramie has fashioned a funnel into his trap along a watery beaver travel route. Whether it's a coyote, bobcat, hogs, anything, you want to try to funnel them into a certain area. Just like any of the trapping you're doing, you're trying to focus an animal to go in that spot. Whether it be a snare, you're lining it with logs, or a beaver, putting sticks in the ground so that it funnels it right to where your trap is. And that's all that's acting as, is a funnel. Now just take my safeties off and hope for the best.
aspen tree. Aspen trees are mainly located in the mountains, usually where you have some kind of water source. They can be very useful for many different things. Mother Nature always impresses me. You look around and she gives us things all over the place. For example, this aspen bark. It makes one heck of a tea. Tastes great. Also, if you have a cough, it's great for a cough. cup of tea, Laramie may be able to see the critters he hopes to find in his traps in the morning to come. Well, will you look at that? My old honey hole paid off again. The backbone of the world. Below these slopes, Laramie Sasquatch Miller has set his traps to harvest a crop of fur pelts. This is the time a true trapper lives for, to get up in the dawn and go out and see what his traps have won him in the night. You know, that's the coolest thing about trapping is you never know what you're gonna have in your trap when you go to check it. For instance, I set this trap specifically for beaver. I knew there was always a chance I could catch an otter or a muskrat or a coon in it, but show up this morning, sure enough, what do I got? A nice old coon. Well, there's my coon pill. I'm gonna slide it over the top of this so it doesn't stick together and harden together. Stretch it real good. And voila. Not all traps bear fruit every time. Laramie's first tree set produces nothing for him yet. It's a different story though than trap two. Well, will you look at that. My old honey hole paid off again. That's the sight you like to see. Perfect little hide on him. That's pretty. Well, I'm not Daniel Boone. I'm not gonna make a coonskin cap, but I'm sure I can find a good use for it and that stew will be pretty tasty. The raccoon is a masked bandit who's a terrible marauder on bird's nests, but not this one. Laramie's last trap is the conibear he set along the beaver slide. But there are things other than beaver around. Look at that. A muskrat. Out here in the woods, everything eats muskrat. From fisher cats, bobcats, bears, it don't matter. It's like a delicacy of the woods. Muskrat in his trapper's basket, Laramie heads for the bank of the river to take the pelt off and prepare the meat for dinner. From the look of the tracks, Laramie's not the only one who likes being by the water. Little crater's been around here somewhere. It's really nice to skin because all you need to do is make one cut pretty much. And you just pull her off. Now 
I'll just get this back to camp and cook me up some muskrat backstrap. It's one of my favorite meals. Along with muskrat and raccoon, Laramie would like to add another delicacy. So he goes out with his bow to hunt for some kicking chicken, ruffed grouse. There's a rough grouse right there. a good bit of game meat now, and some he'll salt and lay up in the larder. But tonight it's time for roasted and fried raccoon, muskrat, and grouse enjoyed beside the campfire. Another long season for Sasquatch. As he looks back on the trail, his mind begins to turn to where it'll lead when the sun comes up once more. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. The journey of the Mountain Man, Laramie Sasquatch Miller has been long, leading him from bear and mule deer to moose and lion. Now he's come to the territory of the elk. These sawtooth mountains are the ridge pole of the traditional home of the Shoshone and Nez Perce, and the land, once again, of the wolf, with which Laramie must contend for elk. Snows are coming to shackle the country in winter, and the elk are wary of both weather and wolves. Laramie must overcome those forces of nature and terrain, and overcome the sharp senses of the Wapiti. Seven hundred pounds of winter meat on the hoof, and one shot to take it. You know, you gotta adapt to every situation that you're in. For example, I can't hunt the same way I did in Colorado, up here in Idaho and Montana. Up here in Idaho, Montana, you spot an elk herd at night. There's no guarantee where they're gonna be the next morning. These wolves and predators up here, they may come in and chase them, no telling, 20 miles off. You can never guess what the elk are gonna do. It's all a puzzle for Laramie, the mystery of elk, and he's on the trail to solve it. I'm not seeing a whole lot of deer or elk sign, but I'm seeing a ton of wolf sign, so not a good sign either. 
some huge tracks. An orange vest, hardly the fashion of the old mountain men, but it's the letter of the law in Idaho today. And there were other mountain man fashions, like women. After months and years alone in the wilderness with only a horse for company, even the sternest mountain man began to think about female companionship. Taking an Indian woman tied a mountain man to a tribe and gave him protection in its territory and offered other benefits. A bottle of whiskey might be the bride price, but sometimes it was love that brought a mountain man and an Indian woman together. A good woman was good to find, to share your buffalo blanket, to help keep your camp and work your pelts and sometimes give you a real family in lonely places. Laramie's mind is on other things for the time. I'm out here elk hunting, but I have a whitetail tag too. And I'd be danged if the first thing I don't see is a pretty decent little eight point whitetail buck. There's a whitetail buck right here. Laramie's ultimate goal may be elk, but he knows that you don't pass up a chance to take a whitetail, especially with winter looming behind the mountains. He's right behind that tree. I need him to come out from behind that tree and turn broadside so I can get a shot. I can just barely see him through the limbs on the side of the tree. steps. Here he comes, here he comes. The snowy peaks of Idaho and Laramie Sasquatch Miller on the Trail of Elk has an unexpected chance to go after a white-tailed buck. I just need him to take a couple more steps if I can get a shot. Here he comes, here he comes. ran off, I couldn't see if I hit him because of the smoke. My hammer got rusty and it, that first shot, it didn't want to fire. And then the second time it was a hang fire. I think I probably shot right over that buck's back because I felt myself pulling up when I had that little hesitation. I'm gonna give it about 30, 45 minutes and then I'll go check and see if there's any blood, but I'm pretty sure I missed him. Well, there went backstraps for dinner. It might be time for some target practice. When the Hawking first came out in the mid-1800s, it was the absolute craze. It was like the Rolls Royce of guns. They only made a little over 300 of them, so the demand was so high, they didn't have enough supply. What the Hawking did is it revolutionized the West, because instead of having to shoot everything under 100 yards, they were capable of shooting out to 200 yards, possibly even 300 yards. We're gonna do a little test today and we're gonna shoot out to 200 yards and see how accurate we can be. We're gonna shoot both a round ball and then we're gonna use the new replica Hawking to shoot a conical bullet.
fruit salad. Mountain man style. Boom! That was at 50 yards with the patch and round ball. And we made cantaloupe soup. Let's go take a look at it. Well, I don't believe I'm gonna be using that cantaloupe again. <laughs> Better go get another one. Now we're gonna do a little test. We're gonna use the Hawk and Replica with conical bullets in it. Let's see what it does to this cantaloupe. The conical bullet was first invented in the 1820s by the British Army. Well, there's some more cantaloupe soup. That one's not in as many pieces, but it's destroyed just as good. What happens when that round ball hits, it stays together a little better and just, I mean, mushrooms out and destroys everything. But those conicals, they kind of rifle through. So you get more pass-throughs with the conical than you would with the round ball. Pretty interesting stuff. Can't let it go to waste. What I got now is I'm gonna shoot at 100 yards. I got the old hawk in here with the patch and round ball. And at 100 yards, I'm probably gonna be dropping about six inches with this, so I gotta account for that. A Little bit of wind, we'll see. Laramie sets up the shot, now with a conical bullet. <laughs> it's amazing when you actually have a rifled barrel and you're not shooting round balls, how much more accurate you are. Laramie steps back to 150 yards and loads up a round ball. Finally, he takes it out to 200 yards with a patched round ball. I do believe I shot right over it. Well, as you can tell, 150 yards is about my max. When I can't consistently hit a watermelon at that distance, I have no business shooting at an animal at that distance, so I'm 150 yards and in. That's the way it goes. Gives you a little more respect for the mountain men back in the day. Well, I've looked all over the place and I can't find any blood, so pretty confident I didn't hit that deer. And Live to hunt another day, I guess. That'll just make him a little smarter for next time I go after him. Laramie can feel the weather closing in and so can the elk. Idaho, where elk walk the skylines. Laramie Miller's Hawkins is up to the task, but as he hunts, weather rolls in, and he may not be the lone predator as the herds catch the scent of wolves. See if I was hunting with a rifle, that's about 300 yards. Could be done. Yeah, but that's not sporting, in my opinion. 
I don't blame people for doing it. Heck, I've hunted with a rifle plenty. But you know what? You feel a lot better about yourself at the end of the day when you can get up within 100, 150 yards of an animal. I know that he had a fair chance, but you outsmarted him. Or in cases like this, he outsmarted you. <laughs> With the elk staying out of hawking range, there are other chores need tending to. Laramie hikes the trail back to camp to work on a homemade recipe. there's I guess some leftover bear fat and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boil it down and it makes almost like a baking grease and what that grease is it's, it's one of the best leather conditioners and waterproofers there is I use it for everything I use it for my shoes my hat all my clothing it'll help your leather last and it helps waterproof it and how about that it comes straight from mother nature is going to seal this leather and it works as a leather conditioner and a waterproof and because I let it char a little bit it's going to darken the leather which I don't mind one bit all that's left to do now is let that grease soak in Laramie's afoot for now like the old mountain man, he'd rather have a horse. On horseback, mountain men hunted beaver across the west. They rustled horses from Mexico or bought the small tough ponies called medicine dogs from Indians who promptly stole them back. A good horse fetched upward of $30 and mountain men rode them unshod and grazed them on wild grasses in the spring and summer and in the winter fed them bark from cottonwoods and elms. Injuries to riders were common, and most horses died of hard use, no food and water, falling off cliffs or drowning in rivers. Mountain man's horses had no names because you don't name what you might have to eat. Another animal has returned to these mountains. The wolf's been restored after being absent for generations, but that's not only impacted the populations of elk, but has made them far more wary. Sasquatch Miller has come to hunt elk in the mountains of Idaho. And because he's sharing the hunting with wolves, the elk are far smarter than ever. If I had a cow tag, I'd be eating good tonight. But right there goes to show you how smart an elk is. You look, as soon as that cow saw something it didn't like, I was standing here. It circled, got the wind in its favor, circled downwind to smell me. I mean, that's their best defense. My uncle used to always say, they can hear you three times, see you twice, but they'll only smell you once. If they smell you, the game's over. But hey, where there's cows, there's gotta be a bull around here somewhere. I 
think it's going to snow. Just a little bit. <laughs> Visibility's not the greatest right now. You, know, you can see probably two, three hundred yards. But the snow is so crunchy that it's loud walking. It makes for not very good hunting conditions. But I do know one thing, as soon as this storm front moves through, these animals are gonna get up and they're gonna move. So I'm just gonna buy my time. I'm still gonna hunt, but I'm gonna buy my time till the storm moves through. Hopefully I can get my opportunity then. While waiting for the elk to move after the storm, Sasquatch still needs to have something to eat. Now the best part of the grouse is obviously the breast, but I'll take those thighs and I'll make some dumplings later on. These aren't store-bought onions. These are Sasquatch-grown onions. Don't get no better than that. You know, I'm constantly thinking and putting myself in situations that the mountain men used to go through. But obviously there's some situations that I'll never be able to know or never be able to completely feel that the mountain men went through. The thought excites me. The thought of being in the middle of nowhere by yourself, having to rely on your keen skills to survive excites me. You look at the original mountain. This is in the beginning. They would go out there, it might be one guy, might be two guys, but they would disappear for months at a time. For me, that sounds right up my alley. Looks like my shish kebab grouse is about done. As the snow goes on falling, Laramie Miller goes on hunting elk for his winter meat, placing his feet in the moccasin tracks left by the mountain men on the trail Sasquatch means to make the pathways of his life. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. The untamed life of the Mountain Man was the byproduct of one enterprise, the trapping of furs, mainly beaver, a talent Laramie Sasquatch Miller's learned well. Here's a beaver dam. These little fellers have been busy. Laramie's looking at one of nature's greatest engineering feats. Beaver can spend decades building a single dam, the largest one known stretching almost 3,000 feet across.
The skills Laramie puts to practice in hunting game are similar to those he uses to find sign of beaver and other fur bearers and to locate the best places for his sets. If you look right there, that little runway, that's a perfect spot to set a conor bear trap. It kind of works as a funnel, so it'll funnel those beavers right into my trap. They don't really have anywhere else to go, so I'm gonna set my first trap right there. Laramie's pack basket is a hold all for every manner of trap. And woven from hardwood strips, it prevents sharp metal edges from digging in while Sasquatch hikes the woods. What I'm gonna set right here is a 330 Connor Bear trap. And you've seen me set these all the time. And one thing you wanna really be careful of is never get comfortable with them because, I mean, th these traps kill fairly good sized critters. because that thing goes off and it won't be pretty. It won't just be a black and blue spot. It'll be a, ouch, my finger's broken in half spot. You know, you wanna make sure you tie this off good just in case the water rises or whatnot. Your beaver doesn't go floating down the river with your trap. That'd be an expensive set. The what I've got here is I've got a couple of already, the bark's already been eaten off of them. That's the sticks you want to use for your braces because if they've still got bark on them, you risk that beaver coming up and starting to eat the bark off the side and then it goes off and you have nothing. You put too much effort into this to have something go wrong and miss an animal. And you've heard me say it a million times the last thing, always double check and look at your trap and make sure your safeties are off. That's pretty sexy if you ask me. Now I'm setting a water set. I'm gonna keep moving down and set as many traps as I can. I'm bound to catch something sooner or later. The trail on which Laramie walks leads back 500 years to high fashion and the one animal at the heart of it. The second largest rodent in the world, the beaver, was by the 1500s trapped virtually to extinction in Europe to supply the market for felt for stylish hats. So the early exploration of North America was fueled by the hunt for the valuable beaver. For the mountain men, the job was not only about trapping the beaver, but preparing the pelts to pack out to be sold. A single prime pelt could be worth half an ounce of pure gold, and riches were to be made by mountain men as well as fur traders, until beaver hats went out of fashion, replaced by ones of silk. Jeremy Miller, the hunt for beaver is as much about a way of living as turning a profit. Laramie's hunt for beaver means walking a lot of country to find just the right spots for his traps. You can look right here, this is a perfect little funnel. I think I'm gonna set a 220 up right here just because the possibility of catching a beaver in this is just as high as catching anything else. So I want a little bit bigger trap, but I still want small enough to if I do catch a mink or something like that, it doesn't cut the sucker in half. So I'm gonna use this funnel to my advantage. I'm hoping to catch mink right here. There's coon tracks all up and down this bank. Well, will you look at that. Sasquatch Miller has set about the task of making a living in the way the old mountain men did, by his traps. Scouting the country, he's finding likely little channels and other beaver highways in which to make his water sets. You can look right here, this is a perfect little funnel. I think I'm gonna set a 220 up right here, just because the possibility of catching a beaver in this is just as high as catching anything else, so. 
I want a little bit bigger trap, but I still want small enough to, if I do catch a mink or something like that, it doesn't cut the sucker in half. So I'm gonna use this funnel to my advantage. The bear trap Laramie setting is made to kill instantly when it snaps shut. Now, Laramie finds two stout sticks to brace up his trap. See, and on this one, it's a little different. I don't have a tree or anything to tie to. So you put your two braces in, and then you gotta put another stick out here so that you can tie the trap to so it don't go floating down the river. An experienced mountain man knew which way his stick floats in case a beaver swam off with his trap. And there you go, that's a perfect little set. I'm hoping to catch mink right here is what I'm really after. But like I said before, the possibility of beaver, muskrat, even otter coming through here is pretty high. There's lots of food, lots of little narrow passageways through here, and that's what them critters love because they can kind of ambush their pre prey in all these little coves. Just perfectly natural for a trapper right here. Beaver were the grand prize, but that didn't stop mountain men from trapping other critters. There's coon tracks all up and down this bank, and I see a few crawfish shells where them coons have been eating crawfish, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a leg hold right here with a drowning set, so that coon will get in the water and the weight of that trap will drown him. So I've got this leg hold set up with about 10 foot of chain. You know, the mountain men back in the day, every trap that they set was a water set drowning because they couldn't afford for an animal to get on land and kind of flop around and scuff his hide all up. And that was big money for them, so they couldn't afford for that to happen. That's just a, another variation of how to set a lake hole. Like the old saying goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Or if the trap works, a raccoon or a mink or a beaver. A trapper's morning is always filled with excitement as he goes out to see what his sets may have taken. The first trap Laramie comes to this morning is a disappointment. It rests untouched with nothing having found it overnight. But there are other sets to check and one of them could pay off for Sasquatch with brown gold. Look at that. Christmas came early. This right here was brown gold. Next step's the physical part.
for the old mountain men, going after the beaver was not about a choice of lifestyles. For many, it was a way to earn their livings and sometimes their fortunes without having to plow a field or build a fence. Well, will you look at that? Christmas came early. You know, to the mountain men back in the day, this right here was brown gold. This is the most profitable business because everybody was making hats and stuff out of beaver back east, so they had a high demand. Well, it's not quite as profitable today, but it's still fun in a way of life. some ways, the fun part is over, and the hard part of the mountain man's life is about to begin. After the excitement of finding a beaver in the trap, there's now the job of readying it to take it to market. men back in the day they'd go out and check their traps every single morning early while it was still cool and say they caught three beaver that day well as soon as they got those beavers back to the shoreline they'd skin them right there and then they'd use the beaver meat to they would cut the tails off because the tails was a delicacy and they'd use the rest of the beaver they'd either eat it if they were really hungry or they would take it and go bait other traps that they had set for black bear and wolf and stuff like that. Beaver, they couldn't afford for the hide to go bad, so that they had to do it right then and there, and that's the best way to do it. The other beaver product is castor sacks, used to scent perfume for rich ladies to dab on. Brown gold. But the work isn't done yet, it just started. Next step's the physical part, fleshing. Fleshing or flensing with a knife or scraper takes off shreds of meat and fat and gets down to the bare hide, which, when dry, will not rot or be infested with insects. Well, I'm just about done with this hide, and what I'll do now is I'll take it and I'll stake it to a board in a circle so that it stretches so when it dries it doesn't shrink down. Belt stretched out to dry, Laramie can sit back as a tender beaver haunch cooks over the open fire to make his mountain man dinner for him. Another morning, Laramie Sasquatch Miller is heading back out on the trail, checking his trap sets to see if they've earned him anything more in the night. Well, will you look at that? Oh, that's awesome. Old Daniel Boone would be proud. the adventure and excitement of the mountain man's rugged life, this is the heart of it. They came to the mountains to trap the beaver and make their fortunes, and the hours were long and hard. There it is, brown gold. For the mountain man, Every pelt of every stripe was a prize. Well, will you look at that? It's gonna be coon stew for dinner. The 
This is a drowning set, which is self-explanatory. It both kills the animal swiftly and protects the fur from damage. Set my trap real quick right here in the same spot and continue on. With a water set, Laramie doesn't have to worry as much about his scent as he would with a leg hold set on dry land. With each new trap set awaits a possible new surprise. That's awesome, it's a mink. You know, I haven't caught very many of these little suckers. That is freaking cool. Look at that little deep. That's a nice little surprise. more, it's back to camp and the chores of skinning and dressing the skins to make them into prime pelts. You know, back in the day, those mountain men, they, the only thing they really trapped was beaver. That was big money on the market. Every once in a while you hear about them taking coons or whatever to the market, but they didn't get anything out of them because beaver was such a craze. So they never set specific traps out for coon or anything else. It was always beaver, but obviously every once in a while they'd catch a coon or any kind of water animal in those beaver traps. I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do with it, but this one has a really pretty thick hide, so I'll figure some cool way of using it for something. Now that, my friends, is one beautiful coon hide. Old Daniel Boone would be proud. It could be that Laramie is contemplating a coonskin cap, but in the meantime, he's fixing the rest of the raccoon into a bubbling stew. It's still a big country out here, but without the beaver, it would have remained unseen and unexplored for far longer than it was. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. For Laramie 
Sasquatch Miller? The ultimate quest of his life on the trail has been the hunt for fur and pelts. And he's taken up where his old mountain man predecessors left off, setting his traps to capture the brown gold the beaver carries on its back. Now, it's south from beaver country to the land of the Texicans to add wild hog to the winter larder. Well, instead of Sasquatch mingling with the grizzly bears and the elk and the mule deer, this week I decided to change it up and I'm mingling with the snakes and the pigs. Hey, it's all fun. There's no better place for Sasquatch to look for hogs in Texas. The most explosively expanding big game animal on the continent, hogs find ideal habitat in the state and are estimated to number between two and three and a half million today and leaving their mark. You know, it's amazing, those hogs. They destroy so much crop and stuff every year. They're ruthless little critters. The best way to tell how fresh these wallows are is you look. And when you got standing water like that, the rule of thumb is if it's still murky, they've been there within the last 12 hours. And you can see there's still a couple of these little wallows that they have that are still murky. So they were here last night or early this morning. Pretty cool. In Texas, hogs do over $50 million in agricultural damage each year. You see where they've been tearing it up and eating the roots. It's just a matter of time. Today it's got to be pushing 90 degrees. My best bet in the middle of the day like this is to sit next to water. If you look down here, you can see those hogs have been wallowing in this mud a ton. And what that does is it cools them down, but it also works as sunscreen for them. So they have to come to the mud to cool down and to get that mud on them to protect them from the sun. I'm just going to hunker down and see if I can't get lucky. Laramie is shucking his buckskins in the heat, but the old mountain man had to look hard for clothes to wear. A greenhorn might come into the country dressed in store-bought, but it soon wore out and he'd switch to buckskin. Icy in the winter and sweltering in the summer, it did wear like iron. Buckskin leather was also useful for knife sheaths and rifle scabbards. As for fringes, they were decoration, although some say they helped hide a mountain man shape in the timber. Elk was a main source of durable leather, while buffalo robes were used for warmth. Hats were made of felt, and high fashion was definitely in the eyes of the beholder. In cold weather, there was nothing like the hooded capote, sewn from a wool blanket. Sasquatch, the wild hog hunt has turned into a waiting game. One which the swirling winds are doing their best to ruin. Rough conditions right now. That wind keeps swirling a little bit. Them hogs have such a good nose. They can't see real well. They can hear all right, but their nose is their main defense. And with that wind swirling, I'm better off sitting back at camp. For Laramie, the hike back to camp turns into a hog hunt when he finds fresh sign along the trail. to hope that one of the hogs halts in its tracks. The 
Republic of Texas and the Empire of the Wild Boar, with upward of three million hogs for Laramie Sasquatch Miller to hunt. A sounder is on the run in front of him, but he needs one stop long enough to get a shot. Sasquatch ain't used to this. It's so hot out here. My panties feel like I just jumped in a swimming pool. <laughs> but, what are you gonna do? Keep on keeping on. As much as wild hogs love this country, it is not their native home. Hogs are an exotic, like that carp there, and first came here from the old world with the Spanish explorers. Not a hopeful sign, but a better one might be lying ahead. <laughs> we looked at that. And folks, that right there is what it's all about. I mean, doing this, living in the mountains like I do, I get to see some of the coolest things Mother Nature has in store for us. I mean, that deer's not more than a couple days or week old at the most. I don't even think it's that old, a couple days. <laughs> it's pretty cool. If you're deer hunting, we'd be in pretty good shape. That's the way it usually works. If I was deer hunting, all I'd see is hogs. Now that I'm hog hunting, all I'm seeing is deer. <laughs> Old Ma Nature, she likes to throw curveballs at me all the time. You know, back in the day, the Indians and the mountain men, they had to make do with whatever they had and they made what's called cordage, which is also rope. Right here, I've got cedar, and cedar actually makes really good cordage. Any kind of bark that has, is fibrous, you can make cordage out of it. Some of it's stronger than others and works better than others, but just know your surroundings, do a little research whenever you're gonna go somewhere, just in case. You never know, it's a great tip to have. Check that out. I think the wife would even like that bracelet and it took me two minutes to make. The hogs may be staying clear of Sasquatch, but they're leaving plenty of sign for him. Back home in the Sasquatch woods, bears will tear logs up like this. What they're doing is they're looking for termites, ants, whatever other bugs, grubs, whatever else is in them. But here them hogs do, you can tell them hogs done rooted this log all the heck. They're around. That's why it's just gotta find them. some hog beds. It's kind of funny how them hogs, they'll burrow themselves kind of down in the ground so that they're flat with the ground so they can see better. Plus the ground's a lot cooler when you get down a little bit. They're smart critters. They're a lot smarter than people give them credit for. There's one insect hogs are smart enough to give a wide berth. Those little suckers right there. May not be, be very big, but they carry one heck of a bite. Those fire ants have been known to kill calves, fawns, pigs, whatever. Right as they're born, they crawl up on them and pretty much eat them. They bite you, you'll know it. 
Texas got all kinds of creepy crawlies down here that everything will bite you. By the campfire, Sasquatch contemplates how everything in Texas either bites, scratches, sticks, or stings. You definitely don't want that little sucker crawling in your bedroll. <laughs> Be a rude awakening. Here, the rule is, the smaller the pinchers, the deadlier the sting. And this boy's got mitts small enough to tie the laces on a gnat's shoes. Texas, it's on the hot side of hog killing weather. And when Sasquatch gets a herd in front of him, the big ones keep going. In camp, he hopes he won't be sharing his bedroll with unwelcome guests. They call it jackrabbit starvation. What happens with a diet without fat? What I got here is I've got some flank fat here and then some jerky. You can't survive off a wild game alone. It's too lean. You won't get the fat necessary to keep your body warm in the winter. So what I'm doing is I'm making pemmican. And you, you take your fat, and you take your jerky, and you either grind them up or cut them up really fine and mix them together. That way you got best of both worlds. You got wild game, and you got fat. So what I do when I finish cutting up my fat and my jerky and got it mixed together, I like to let it sit, let them kind of mix together. And I put it in my pouch and I'm ready to use it on the trail. The key to hunting hogs in hot weather, Laramie knows, is staking out water. There's a big boar on the edge of the trees over on the other side of this little pond right here. I guarantee he's gonna head straight for that pond. I'm gonna see if I can get to the edge before he gets there. It's a good boar, but he's holding up out of range. Now, the boar heads back into cover. That's about Sasquatch's luck. Something just spooked that hog. I know it wasn't me, I got the wind perfect. There gotta be some more pigs or something in that brush right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit right here and wait for an hour or so and see if more pigs don't come out because I know I didn't spook that pig. a self-fulfilling prophecy, a hog herd moves out into the open.
Well, <laughs> that was freaking awesome. First off, this big boar comes down. For some reason, he just ran off, and I couldn't figure out what it was. Well, then heard something in the woods. Sure enough, here come about 20 pigs, as you saw. I picked the biggest pig out and shot. <laughs> about 120 yards with his old hawk in it. That's what I'm talking about, pork chops tonight, baby. Texas has become the wild hog mecca of the country, and it's where Laramie Sasquatch Miller has come to end his season by trying to hang some pork on the meat pole. It's time now to see if his hog can connect it. Pork chops, baby. As warm as it is, I'm gonna take it right back to camp right now. I'll gut it out because I want to save the stomach in case I want to cook something with the stomach. Good to go. Once in a while, a hog would get loose from the caravan, whatever. If they saw it, they'd shoot it, eat it. But I guarantee you, if they did have an abundance of them back then, they'd use the hide just like I'm going to use now. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'll take and flush this hide, stake it out to dry. I like to let the meat hang. As warm as it's been, it's going to be interesting. I'll have to keep checking it. If the flies start bloating it, then I'm gonna have to cut it up and, you know, cook it and dry it. You know, it's crazy, these old hogs. They got what's called a shield on their front shoulders and their neck. It's from when they're fighting and whatnot. But they've got gristle, and their hide is a lot thicker, but they've got gristle really thick on their shoulders. It's pretty amazing. I mean, it's three times as thick as the back end. Sasquatch special seasoning on there. I can't tell you what it is, or I'd have to kill you. But I can promise you it's gonna be good. That's gourmet squatch cooking right there, buddy. Woo! It's hot, but I tell you what, it tastes awesome. Mm. Well, this year was an uh, interesting year. Definitely had its ups and its downs. And I finish up here with one of the best meals I've ever had. Some hog ribs over an open fire. I do believe the old mountain men would be proud. I'm gonna keep living my lifestyle and trying to pass along the, the last of a breed. The Mountain Man. A figure in the moonlight breaks trail up on the divide, hawking in hand. He's hunting for the old ways on the high, lonesome peaks, and he will find them in the moccasin prints of the Mountain Men. 